So here we are again. Infinity Blade has returned for what may be its final episode of Slashtastic God-Battering Action. The world is bigger, the weapons are more plentiful, and the RPG elements have been applied with a little more vigour. There's even a more traditional linear structure, which funnels your warriors through specific stages and locations in a set order. But while the beast may have grown and visited an armory, its beating heart remains unchanged. Infinity Blade 3 is still about slashing oversized monsters to death using your finger, allowing you to deal fatal blows with your pinky and fell gods with a gesture. Accompanying protagonist Cyrus on his quest is Isa, a female fighter who happens to be equally adept at chopping titans down to size. Both characters now have three fighting styles to choose from. You can focus on perfecting the art of dual wielding, or push experience into light or heavy weapon use. Each discipline has its own perks and penalties. Powerful two-handed weapons pack a wallop, but leave you unable to dodge, while dual wielding yields less damage, but lets you leap around the battlefield like Yoda in that crap Star Wars movie. The fighting itself feels incredibly familiar. When it comes to this kind of gesture-based fighting, the Infinity Blade series is second to none, and IB3 manages to deliver the same thrills as its predecessors, perfectly executing a series of parries before letting fly with a furious flurry of sword strokes still gets the blood pumping, and the wide variety of enemy types keeps scuffles pretty fresh. There are a few tweaks, weapon-specific combos, and the occasional quick-time ruckus with a dragon, but Infinity Blade diehards should find themselves immediately at home. It's when you step off the battlefield that you start to see the big changes. A linear story replaces the rudimentary kill them all for killing sake structure of the previous games. However, while the story adds a definite sense of purpose and momentum, its thrust is easily lost amid the inevitable retreading of previous areas. You see, despite the switch to a more linear narrative, the game still kicks you back to the beginning of each chapter if you're killed by the boss. These bosses are often tens of levels more powerful than you, and are deliberately designed to hand you your diced buttocks on the first encounter. Upon death, the game advises you to return to a previous level and grind out some more experience. This is where the RPG elements start to take hold. Stats need to be leveled, unlocking abilities and bonuses. Better weapons and armor must be purchased. Existing blades can be upgraded with enchanted gems or improved with the help of a blacksmith. This is a time-consuming and costly business, and if you don't want to pay out for in-app purchases, it's going to take you a substantial amount of backtracking to accumulate the currency required to give your warriors a fighting chance against some of the bigger bosses. If all you were looking for from Infinity Blade 3 was more of the same, then this game should put a big tick in your box. We found the low-level grinding to be a bit of a pain, especially when there's supposedly a story to be told. And with the same gameplay foundations propping up a lengthier campaign padded with restarts, it runs the risk of outstaying its welcome at times. Niggles aside though, this is a confident end to a gorgeous, platform-defining franchise. One which should give fans a decent sense of closure and keep them plenty busy over the coming weeks. This has been James with AppSpy.com. We review, you decide.